Hello everybody, Tyler on the God 3 here, and welcome to Pokemon X and Y Anime Reviews. This episode we're reviewing today is episode 61, and it is titled Into the Badlands. Fight, Gumi! And this episode was really fun, actually, like really nice. Obviously, we're not going to ignore the giant elephant in the room of Gumi evolving, and I will like talk about that towards the end, but overall, like if you even delete that, from the episode this overall episode was was pretty fun like just a little like there was little things in this episode that was really nice so let's get into that plot summary the plot basically begins with um the plot begins with all these spoinks and they're eating fruit and having a good time at a desert oasis at least that's what i think you call those like little well, those patches of grass with water and like fresh water and fruits everywhere in the middle of a desert. I think that's an oasis. Anyway, they're at an oasis and they're chilling. And it's what's weird is that like these two guys show up and they're eating fruits with them too. And then they say goodbye to them and then just leave the oasis. And we never see them ever again. Like they don't reoccur. They don't show up in the entire episode. They like that's their cameo and then they leave. Like there's no reason as to why they're there. They're just there. Not sure why. But yeah, they, they eat with the spoinks and then leave. Afterwards, however, Grump Pig comes in and starts attacking the spoinks. And one of the spoinks is like the leader and tries to defend him but ends up getting his ass whooped. So the spoink ends up retreating off to the desert where it can like hopefully get help from something else. Meanwhile, we cut to the desert area where, well, I guess you can say this is the desert. There's no sand, but it's mostly like rocky wasteland. Anyway, when we cut to here, we see that uh, all Ash, Pikachu, Gumi, and, and the rest of the gang are drinking water. And uh, Ash feels like it's time to train Gumi. And I really like moments like these where Ash just up and decides to train his Pokemon. Because it makes, it, like, it makes his wins, the gems, justifiable now. And it shows how competent Ash has become because, like, just training any at any time of the day. And even though this training segment doesn't last very long, it's just good to see that Ash took the initiative. So, um, yeah, he trains Gumi to fight off against Pikachu. And while that's happening, Spoink sees Ash on the side and Spoink comes out and is injured so it almost passes out. They heal Spoink back up and then Spoink wants Ash to come with it back to the Oasis so that it can uh, go ahead so that hopefully Ash can fix the problem that's going on. Spoink apparently sees the competence of Ash and that's what's up. So Spoink leads Ash and the crew to uh, the Oasis and when that happens they end up seeing that the, the Grump Pigs, well the Grump Pig is there and he's forcing all the Spoink to give them fruits and feed the Grumpix. So basically slave labor for Spoinks. And uh, Grumpix just eating like a king. And then while that's happening, um, Ash decides to go ahead and battle off against the Grumpig. However, things don't go quite as planned when Grumpig ends up attacking like crazy. And when that ends up happening, uh, Gumi ends up getting a like flashback of everything uh, thing that happened in its original home because its original home got attacked by Pokemon as well. So yeah, we get a little bit more Gumi backstory based on that. I have a feeling that the original once we get to the original home where Gumi came from, some shit's probably gonna go down, obviously because Gumi remembers it so much. Anyway, when that ends up happening, our heroes run into a cave to shelter themselves from the vicious attacks. But then once that ends up happening, they end up getting locked into a cage. And then who the per the people who locked him into the cage is none other than Team Rocket. However, this time around, I believe Team Rocket actually did a pretty decent plan. They decided to team up with the Grumpig that's attacking everybody when they went to the uh, when they came to the Oasis. And it's also funny, um, Team Rocket has like the, they tell their plan, but the way they tell their plan is via this like little puppet paper slideshow thing. It's pretty entertaining. 
And then once all of that said, done and out of the way, they, this is their plan. Their plan is to take control, use Grumpig to take control of all the Spoinks and then just start attacking them one by one and having them be attacked unless they give them Pikachu and Chespin. So in other words, it's a hostage situation. And I got to say, that's pretty damn ingenious. That, that's really cool, actually. So Pikachu, they decide to go ahead and like meet Team Rocket's orders. Pikachu leaves out of the little cage opening that they had for specifically for him. And then um, Chessman decides to go ahead and go as well. Team Rocket doesn't really question it. They just go ahead and say, all right, we've got Chessman as well. Let's lock him up. But Chespin has a plan. Chespin's plan is to use Vine Whip in order to pick the lock in order to get him and Pikachu out. Meanwhile, Daydene is just small enough to fit out of the cage, and Gumi can get out of the cage via its slippery body. So they decide to go ahead and do that, and when they do that, they try to get the key from Grumpig. However, that ends up falling apart when Grumpig wakes up and ends up pulling Daydene out. And I gotta say, Daydene is a freaking boss in this episode. I am I picked the right mascot for my channel. Daydene is fighting Grumpig hard like yeah he's getting his ass kicked but but they then they still going in and bonnie's rooting for they and telling it to attack and it's just a great battle on they part like yeah they is losing but they is definitely biding a lot of time and doing a great job when gumi ends up seeing his buddy they did end up getting attacked so many times gumi ends up getting flashbacks of its original home again which causes it to go ahead and pump up the courage in order to fight off against Grumpig itself. Gumi goes in and fights off against Grumpig and uses a couple of bite attacks, which they worked for a while, but then Grumpig ends up getting self-aware and starts to dodge the uh, bite attacks. So that ends up failing. However, um, Ash and the others find out there's another way out of the, out of the cage because there's a, a, a weak rock that they can go ahead and attack. So Ash uses Frogadier in order to attack the weakened rock. And when that ends up happening, the rock ends up breaking, and then our heroes end up making it out of the cage. Ash jumps in just in time in order to take an iron tail from the Grumpig that was about to hit his Gumi. Uh, Gumi ends up seeing Ash protecting it, and this is kind of cool. Uh, note it for later, obviously, because we saw it in like one of the trailer shots and pictures. Um, when Ash had Gudra in his eyes, because yeah, spoiler alert, you guys, this is going to evolve all the way to Gudra. And if, but I've already talked about that in my previous videos. And in this episode, Gumi has Ash in its eyes. So I, so I like that little like bond that they share with that. And because of that, Gumi ends up evolving into Sligu. And when Sligu comes out, Sligu is like, Sligu's actually pretty big, bigger than I thought it'd be. Anyway, like not only that, but Sligu actually has a lot of uh, cool features. When Grumpy ends up attacking, Sligu ends up like attaching itself to the ceiling because of its body, and then ends up using a really freaking powerful dragon breath attack. I mean, I'm talking, this dragon breath is huge. Just blast the whole cave entrance. So it knocks uh, Grumpig all the way out into where Team Rocket is, and Team Rocket is like pissed that uh, Grumpig failed, so they're like, uh, you're not, we're not gonna help you out on this one, you're on your own, but then uh, our heroes end up catching up, and the Spoink end up uh, release, getting their control released, so then Ash goes ahead and battles off against, oh, and then Chessman and Pikachu end up getting free, because, you know, Chessman lock, uh, picked the lock, so, um, after that, they end up attacking Ash and the gang, and then Sligu ends up attacking uh, Punkaboo, and NK, and then Pikachu ends up coming in and finishing them off once Ligu hit them with the Dragon Breath, and then they're gone. So at that point, all we have is Grumpig, he's by himself, and all of the Spoink are pissed. Like, the Spoink being pissed is probably the like one of the best parts of the episode, because they, they look pissed. Like, they're ready to just kill the Grumpig. But then the leader Spoink comes in, and ends up like, hey, let's forgive and forget. Let's give Grumpig this apple to show that we're cool. And then they, Grumpig ends up being cool with them. And then Ash and the others are all like, all right, all's well that ends well. And everything works out. Ash is proud of Sligu for all the work it did. And then our heroes basically leave the Oasis and say goodbye to everything. And the episode ends. Now, 
Oh, and I forgot to mention one cool little part. It's real, very small. That's probably why I grazed over it. Um, since this is the first time Team Rocket seen Serena in her new um, in her new design, Jesse actually notices it and points it out. And uh, I can't, I don't know Japanese that well, but basically, long story short, she's saying like, uh, "You cut your hair, did somebody break your heart or something?" Because obviously, Jesse cares a lot about hair. Look at her hair. Anyway, yeah, so that was a nice little moment. This episode was full of nice moments. Like, not even counting the Sligu evolving stuff, this episode was just full of nice moments. Like, I really like seeing they did a battle against Grumpig and going hard. They did has been battling a lot lately, and I'm really proud of it. Like, that's cool. The other moments I just really liked, I liked uh, how, I like how Grumpig was like a slave owner to these guys. It was really cruel and messed up, but it was like funny at the same time. And then, I like the competence Ash had in this episode, obviously. And not much of Clement in this episode, but, you know, it's whatever. He's getting his episode tomorrow. So, well, not tomorrow, next week. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. And then, obviously, Sligo Evolving was really cool. And it's been six episodes since they had Gumi, so this is one of the shortest, like, evolution gaps we've seen so far since Charmeleon and King, uh, you know, since Char Charmeleon. So, yeah, I gotta say, this was a really nice episode full of really nice moments. Um, yeah, this, this is just a really cool episode. And it's been a while since they've been, like, outside. Yeah, like, I noticed that they've always been confined to, like, Koromi City or something else that was plot-heavy. So, it was good to see, like, a... Like, this episode was kind of plot-heavy, too, obviously, but this was good to see them un unwind. The next episode is a Clement episode. is Protect the Future of Science or whatever. But I'll see you all then, everybody. Tyron the Guy 3 out.